If you would, turn in your Bible to John chapter 3. And we're going to read verses 1 through 7. John 3, 1 through 7. This morning is focus on regeneration. That's a fancy theological term for being born again. And we're going to see how Jesus uses that word as we read the first seven verses of John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born anew or born again, it can be translated that way, or it can be translated born above. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again or anew. Father, we thank you for these words. You've given them to us through the Apostle John and his gospel for us to read and take to heart and then to share with others. Help us to understand, especially this morning, this word regeneration as we continue our study in the words of salvation. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We are in a series called The Great Words of Salvation. We started with repentance, which is a change of mind. A change of mind about God, who He is and what He does for us. We continued the following week by looking at justification, which is a change of standing before God. A change of standing. Nothing more than that. Justification talks about how we stand before God. Once we were sinners, now we are redeemed. Today, we are going to be looking at the word regeneration, which is a change of nature which comes from God. There are many stereotypes of the born-again Christian. The word born-again has taken flight. It's gotten a, a character of its own. And so some people see born-again people as Bible-thumping fundamentalists. Others see born-again people as politically conservative. Some people think that born again means a convert at a Billy Graham crusade. And so there have been all kinds of meanings attached to the phrase born again. In John chapter 3, where the phrase comes from, there are seven verses where Jesus underscores three times the importance of regeneration. And yet he doesn't mention the word regeneration. In verse 3, in verse 5, and again in verse 7, he tells Nicodemus that he must be born again. And that's what regeneration is all about. Born again, kenethe anothen, means to begin life anew. It means to experience a complete change of life. And so justification and regeneration go together. In justification, your change of standing before God happens, but it doesn't do anything for your character. But regeneration changes the character. And so the two go together. You can't separate them. They're like the horse and the carriage. You can't have one without the other. Nobody receives one without the other, but there is a difference between justification and regeneration. In justification, it speaks about what God does for us through Jesus Christ and His sacrifice on the cross. 
It's a substitutionary death that Jesus made on the cross where he took our sins upon himself and it satisfied God. And of course, after death on the cross, Jesus rose from the grave to complete the justification. Regeneration, on the other hand, is what God does within us. It's what God does in our nature, in our character. Justification relates to our forgiveness and our acceptance by God. It's that new standing that we have and justification is really an accounting term where an accountant has columns of information and he transfers from one column to another column. And in justification, God has transferred us from the column of sinner to the column of saint or saved. From the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. In regeneration, that relates to a spiritual birth from above. It is our new nature. So let's look a little more closely then what regeneration is all about. Let's first define it. Regeneration is the biblical word palingenesia. It means, well, genesia gives us our English word genesis, which is the beginning. And paling is the word for again. So, or new. Being new again. Being regenerated. It means a rebirth. It means a spiritual renovation. It means renewal. It means a radical change of life and of mind. It is a change from self-centeredness to God-centeredness. And so we are justified, we stand before God, but we are also changed in our nature from self-centered to God-centered. The word regeneration is actually found in the New Testament twice. It is found, first of all, in Matthew 19, verse 28. And this is where Jesus is telling his disciples that uh, there's going to be a renewed, remade heaven and earth. There is this age and the age to come. And when Jesus speaks about the age to come, he talks about the renewed earth the regenerated earth and this is where the word is used in the regeneration you will see in some translations the other time the word is used is in Titus chapter 3 verse 5 and you might want to turn to that one because I'm going to look at that just briefly Titus is just before the big book of Hebrews Titus chapter 3 Paul is writing to a young pastor named Titus and he writes to him, remind your people, he's talking about the people in his congregation, remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities. Does that sound familiar? We have been submissive to our rulers and authorities for 31 Sundays. Be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for any honest work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy to, to all men. And so in these first two verses, Paul is talking about how Christians live once they've been regenerated. In verse 3, he talks about how they once lived before they were regenerated. Continuing Titus chapter 3, verse one, uh, 3. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by man and hating one another. Does that sound like today's news? Does that sound like the political situation? That's the way we used to live before we were regenerated before we were reborn and then he continues on in verse 5 
he says, and let's start at verse 4. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of deeds done by us in righteousness, but in virtue of His own mercy by the washing of regeneration. And so there is the other time that the word is used. The washing of regeneration. And so he moves on from how Christians lived before. And he says this behavior is not worthy of Christians because of verse 5. The cleansing of life made possible because of the new birth. And a new nature which has been given to us we didn't live that way before the regeneration. What a difference regeneration makes in a person's life. The new birth, being born again, makes so much difference. We once ran to sin. We loved to sin. It was our lifestyle. After regeneration, we run from sin. Make no mistake, sin will run after us, but we run from sin. What did Jesus mean back in John chapter 3? What did Jesus mean when he told Nicodemus that he must be born again? Verse 3 and again in verse 7. Let's focus on the word again. You must be born again again anothen means again or from above and so some translations say born again some translations say born from above well let me explain that if we make a list and we number that list from above means I go back to the beginning number one is above number three and so I go back to number one that's the word anathen that is used in John chapter three we must go above number one or start at number one all over again I must start again from the beginning it means I go back to the top of the list and this is what Jesus was telling Nicodemus he must start all over again he must be born all over again. He has been born physically. Now he needs to be born spiritually. And so the born again is an event, not a process. We aren't born again over and over. It's a one-time event. We must be born again prior to being born again we are not born again after we are born again we are born again we are regenerated and so you and I are walking dead people until we are born again until we have a spiritual birth Jesus makes it clear in verse 6 he says there are two births there is the physical birth and there is the spiritual birth. Paul says the same thing in Romans 8, verse 5. He says, those of the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, and those of the spirit set their mind on the things of the spirit. Paul also says in Romans 8, verse 7, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And then skip down to verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, you will put to deed the things of the body and you will live. And so, being born again means we live by the Spirit. We need to re recognize that the flesh and the spirit are hostile to each other. Before we are born again, we only live by the flesh, and the flesh isn't hostile to the flesh. We don't have this inner turmoil where Paul says, the thing I want to do, I don't do, and the thing I 
I don't want to do, that's what I'm doing. But we don't have that struggle before we become Christians. But there is this hostility develops when we are born again between the flesh and the spirit. So regeneration <clears throat> is a work of God. We don't give birth to ourselves physically and neither do we give birth to ourselves spiritually. Regeneration is not reformation. It's not turning over a new leaf. It's not making promises to ourselves that we're going to do better. Where I vow to do better or do, to do the right thing. Regeneration is a new birth where like begets like. Where dogs and cats beget little dogs and cats. Where the flesh begets flesh. Only God in us can beget a godly life in us. But when we are born again, the Holy Spirit comes into our life and that Spirit begets spiritual life in us. New life is conceived in our soul as soon as we surrender to Jesus Christ. Paul writes, when we become Christians, we are new creations in Christ Jesus. That's the only way to put it. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. And so birthright depends on right birth. There is this one caveat I've mentioned already, one warning, one explanation. The new birth does not uproot the old nature. Those who are born again still possess their old nature. The two go together. It's like they are superimposed one on top of the other. The Christian soul is like a garden plot. We clear a plot and we, we make a garden out of it. The new nature is planted like seeds destined to bloom in a garden of flowers of variegated beauty and fragrance. And then the weeds come up. They will always come up because of the old nature. The soil of the old nature continues to grow weeds. To ignore this warning is to ask for trouble and disappointment. So Jesus says, you must be born again. We've got to have it. Why? because our sinful nature requires it. Sinful parents beget sinful children. As Jesus has said, sinful flesh begets sinful flesh. We would rather make light of our sins and give them fancy names, uh, euphemisms. Uh, sin is just brokenness or sin is weakness sin is hurts or our sins are habits our sins are just hang-ups or poor judgment they are just accidents that we didn't intend or maybe a lapse of behavior or maybe we're just victims of circumstances or sins are something that are just inappropriate. We have all kinds of ways of explaining sin. We'd rather make light of them, but in fact, we are sin addicts. There are many addicts in this world. Every one of us is an addict to sin. The world wants to shine a brighter light on sin. Culture wants to put a veneer on sin and make it look better. What God condemns to death, the world practices as a way of life. The Bible says none is righteous, no, not one. And so we sin because we're sinners. Sinners. 
Individual sins is like a cough that indicates a terrible disease in the lungs. And we can explain that cough away, but the damage is done. Man-made remedies for sin are no more effective than cough drops for cancer. And so we've got to have regeneration. Our sinful nature requires it. The second reason is God's holiness demands it. In Hebrews 12, verse 14, we are told, Strive for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. God cannot permit sin in any of its forms to come into his presence. He told the children of Israel in Isaiah 59, 2, Your sins have made a separation between us. They could no longer feel God's presence because their sins had made a separation. And so Jesus is telling Nicodemus here in John chapter 3, particularly in verse 3 and again in verse 7, until regeneration happens, until you are born again, no one enters the kingdom of God. Justification gives us a new standing before God because we are reckoned to be righteous regeneration gives us that new nature without a new nature our new standing would be just a hollow mockery I read that steel needles and brass pins can look very much alike <clears throat> uh, but a magnet can separate them. You pass them all under a magnet and the steel uh, needles will jump up on the magnet. Only a soul with a new nature can be drawn to God. And that will happen on Judgment Day for sure. You must be born again. We've got to have it. How do we get it? Well, regeneration is not anything that we can do for ourselves. It is not getting a transcendent vision from above. It's not turning over a new leaf. It's not self-realization. It's not getting a, a mysterious uh, uh, religious feeling or seeing a, a star in the sky or... or one more step in the process of, of, of uh, reincarnation. It's none of those things. There is God's side and there is man's side in regeneration. First of all, God must give us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts us directly through our hearts and our minds and he implants this new spiritual life in us. He gives us a new disposition, a new want to, to live for God. I want to do what God asks me to do. The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God, as uh, Keith was talking about earlier, the Word of God convicts. Uh, James chapter 1 verse 18 of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth this is what the Holy Spirit uses the whole the God's holy word the Bible or Peter the Apostle Peter says you have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God and the Apostle Paul says you he made alive when you were dead in trespasses and sins being a work of God Regeneration defies observation and analysis. The birth is a miracle. Just like physical birth is a miracle, so also is spiritual birth. By the time you know you've been born again, you've already been born again. By the time you know that you are awake in the morning when the alarm clock goes off, you're already awake. The supernatural new birth is invisible in operation, 
but not in its effects. Jesus told Nicodemus, the wind blows where it wills. You can't explain it, but you see the effects of it. You see what the wind does. And that is also true of a spiritual birth. And so Jesus asks Nicodemus in verse 10, are you a teacher in Israel and you don't understand this? So how do we receive this change of nature, this regeneration? The Spirit must give it to us. Secondly, we must respond when the Spirit comes to us and wants to give us this regeneration. Our part is to comply with the conditions of salvation. In a garden, conditions must be just right for plants to grow. And so David in Psalm 51, after he sinned with Bathsheba, he writes, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a, right, a new and right spirit within me. The conditions are faith and trust, repentance, acceptance of the new life, and obedience. Some of the conditions that are needed in a regenerated life. Anyone who does not respond is like a person that's looking at a store display window. And he sees in the window abundant life. And he sees freedom. And he sees love and the peace that passes understanding. But he stands there and just looks at it. And then he goes away. He does not go in and buy. He is not willing to pay the price. And he does not respond. We must respond to the Holy Spirit, to the invitation of God. You must be born again. God is willing to do his part. Are we willing to do our part? A man took a car. It was an old car. He took it to the dealer to sell it. And the dealer said, how many miles are on the car? And the man said, oh, I guess about 230,000. And the dealer said, well, we can't sell an old car like that. You've got to turn back the odometer. The man left. And the dealer hear, didn't hear back, and so he called the man, and he said, I thought you wanted to sell that car. And the man said, well, I did. But I don't want to anymore, because now it only has 77,000 on it. <laughs> Too many people are fooling themselves, thinking that they can please God by changing themselves their outward behavior. They need a new heart nature. Why is it that unregenerated, uh, uh, unborn, spiritually born people find that Bible reading is dry, that church is boring, and they think Christians have no fun? It's because they haven't been regenerated. They haven't been born again. They are an old car with a bad engine and a slipping transmission. They are turning back the odometer. And that doesn't change anything. We must all be born again. We all need a new engine. And then we will have a new appetite. We will have a new adoration for God. We will have a new attitude towards sin. We will have an affection toward God. We will have a new ambition to do God's will. A new birth which does not result in any of these things in holy living is a car with a turned back odometer. Or to change the metaphor, a person who does, uh, or has a new birth that doesn't result in a change of living is a half-baked cake. Ezekiel promised Israel that one day God himself would act like a surgeon and he would remove their dead heart of stone and he would implant a heart of flesh, a heart that beats and longs after God. What Jesus does when he talks with Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he just changes the metaphor 
to the delivery room and he says, you must be born again. Regeneration is new life in Christ. Heavenly Father, most of us have been born again and we understand these concepts, but there are many people around us that have not been born again. And even if we have been born again, sometimes we stumble and trip in trying to explain the new birth, the regeneration process to those who have not been born again. Help us to take these things under consideration <clears throat> to make them a part of our thinking so that we can share these things with people that need to be born again. Because in your own words, you have said, you must be born again. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake.